Ah, modeling. Some people love it, some people hate it, and some people use it to get millions of followers on Instagram. But regardless of your personal views on modeling, every single 3D artist needs to have at least a basic understanding of modeling. Why? Well, because it's the foundation for which everything else is built on. Texturing, lighting, animating, they all require you to at least have a basic mesh to start with. And if you can't model, then you're always gonna be reliant on somebody else's work, which is not very good. So there's no excuse. Everybody needs to have that basic understanding of modeling. So that's what this video series is gonna be about. And we are going to be modeling, not a car, not a character, but an anvil, yes. That old medieval blacksmith tool that they hit with a hammer. That's what we're gonna be modeling. Now you might be thinking, come on, why can't we do something more fun, like a, a car or a character? And a lot of people, they jump to that stuff first. I see a lot of beginners, they start modeling a face as like the first thing they make. The trouble with that is that those are very complex, you know, the pro level stuff. And if you don't understand the basics of topology, how to, you know, get edge loops and flow and all that sort of thing, um, then you end up with all these problems. And these users, they get to the end of their project. It's got all sorts of problems going on. They can't fix it and they never finish it and um, then they give up and that sucks. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So I'm giving you a basic introduction to modeling in Blender. Um, if you haven't watched it already, please watch my donut beginner tutorial series. If you're totally new to Blender, that's where you should start. This is what you can complete after that. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my workspace. So I'm gonna collapse all the panels that I don't need. Um, and I'll just squish that over to the right so that I can grab it again if I need to. Uh, but I am going to load in a reference image. So I'm gonna split this view here and load in the UV image editor, which is normally where you would see your render when you render something. But you can also load in a image, any image. So I've got a bunch of different reference photos here. One thing to note with anvils is that you can see that they come in all different shapes and sizes, little tiny stubby ones and really long ones. There's not really a standard, you know, this is an anvil. Um, but I certainly like the look of this one at the top. So I'll load that in. And since we have room here for another one, I'm gonna split the view again, making sure my head's not in the way. And I'm gonna load in another image. Um, I like the texturing on this one. So load that one in and oh, you can sort of see it. Yeah, you don't really need to see that one anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're all set up, ready to go. So I'm going to delete everything in the scene um, and yeah, we can finally get started. So when you start modeling something, the first thing you wanna ask yourself is which one of my primitive shapes, and by primitive, I mean these shapes here, which one of these shapes best resembles the object which I'm modeling? And for a lot of objects, this is quite clear. If you're making a world, it's a sphere. If you're making a cup or a you know drink bottle, it's a cylinder. But in our case, what, what, which one of these shapes actually matches this? And there's not really a clear answer because you've got a whole range of different things. You've got a uh, sort of a cone shape at the front here. You've got, um, I don't know, some sort of, stretched side, some curve shape up there. You've got this cylinder shape that's sort of cutting into it. So there's not really a, a clear shape to start with. So you could really start anywhere. But what I'm gonna do is start with somewhere that I know for sure. And that is that this here, I go from there to there, ignoring everything else, I know that that is a square. So that means I can start with a plane. Drop that in. Okay, so up from the floor, drawing up, I can see that there's a little step that it's on. So in edit mode, I'm just gonna extrude that up very slightly, just like that. Um, okay, so that's good. So we've got the first step, baby steps. Now what we're gonna do is focus on this tapered, <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that. Some guy blowing their nose really hard. Uh, this tapered edge here. Right, so ignoring this bit, right? 
that whole cylinder cut in shape. Just imagine that that wasn't there. So you would have what a cube that essentially sort of, you know, yeah, tapers into itself. So how could we do that? Well, a lot of artists would go like this. They would take this uh, bottom bit, they would extrude it up, they would scale it in, extrude it up again, scale it in, and they would do this. And you know, that that's fine. The problem with this though, is for one, it's, it's fiddly, <laughs> which we like to avoid. Uh, but two, you're, it, it's not very exact. And so you've got varying distances like between this loop cut and that loop cut. Sorry about the noise. Um, and yeah, it, it's not exact. And a computer is far better at doing these curved shapes. So we can actually do it in Blender. So I'll show you how we do it. All right. Ah. By the way, I like to leave this turned off, the limit selection to visible. So I turn that off and then that way, when you select something, you know that it's selecting everything, right? Like both sides of the mesh. So I leave that turned off. Anyway, so I'll create a new face there. And let's just do this again. So what I'm gonna do, instead of going up one step, scaling it in, I'm gonna go all the way up to wherever I want it to end. So let's say it's, yeah, it's about that. So it's basically the cube that we had at the start. And I'm now gonna create some loop cuts, which we do by hitting Control R. And then here, using the scroll wheel on my mouse, I can choose how many cuts to give it. And if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a uh, number of cuts. And I'm gonna increase that until it says 12, okay? Which is just a nice amount. Um, and then I clicked and then right-clicked to put it right in its spot. Uh, okay, so now once we have this, what I can actually do is if I was to scale this one, you know, as you would predict, it would do that. But if I turn on proportional editing, which I do by hitting O or just turning it on down here in the base. Now, when I scale it in, you can see that I'm grabbing everything around it and I'm scaling it inwards. And you can see that that now is with, with my scroll wheel here, I have some control over how it looks. Um, now, as this is, it's, you can see that it, it's creating a pinched effect where it's actually sort of uh, shrinking the distance between all the lines as it pulls it inwards, which isn't actually what we want. Um, I wanna maintain it so that I get you know, a nice looking mesh, um, but I, I still want that shape. So what we can do is we can choose to scale it on every axis except the vertical axis. And we do that if, whilst you're scaling like this, if you hit Shift and Z, that's telling Blender, scale it on every axis except the Z axis. And it's, at, it's hard to actually see it from this angle, but if I do it here, you'll see this is how it looks normally. And then with Shift Z, that's what it's doing. So it's now only scaling on the X and the Y axis, not the Z. And that is how we are gonna create our beautiful curved shape there. Uh, what's more is you can see that in this case, we're, we're getting this, um, this smoothed off bit at the base there. So if you don't want that, you've actually got control over what the actual curved shape is. Like if you was to use linear, it would be a straight line. Um, if you were to use random, <laughs> it would be like a, a piece of weird art. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them. Like sphere is good for some objects. That's pretty cool. The one that we're gonna use is inverse square, which is really good um, in this sp particular instance. Cause what I'm gonna do is, uh, yeah, I'm not taking the top piece, I'm taking the you know, sort of somewhere up near the top. And I'm just gonna scale it in, Shift Z, and you'll see very quickly that we can create the basic frame of our anvil, like so. Cool. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the base here, and I'm gonna set this proportional editing fall off to sharp. And then what I'm gonna do is hit scale and scale it again, Shift Z, and just extrude that out a little bit. And that's going to, going to allow me to sort of exaggerate the base to be however thick I want it. Just, you know, if that's what we want, um, which in my case I do. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, wonderful. So we've, we've done this ignoring, you know, the cylinder shape cutout that we've, we've got here with all this spaghetti mess. Um, we've now got the basics of our mesh, this whole, whole bit up here. What I'm gonna do now is you might have noticed looking at our picture here that it, and actually it's probably easier to see it on this side above where my head is, um, but it extrudes out a little bit further like that. So what I'm gonna do is take this, and first of all, let's let's extrude, so let's create this part. 
extruding that upwards. Okay, so that's basically a cube on top here. So that I, I know if I extrude, pull it upwards until that looks like about a cube, about a nice square on top. Right, now if I select this section here, I'm going to extrude this out and this is just going to be the part that's overhanging this, like the part under here, right? It's hard to say. I'm talking about this part, right? So I'm just extruding that out. And that, now this part needs to be slightly raised, the, the, butt, the base of this. So just like before, I'm adding in loop cuts to give us more geometry. So I'll just do one loop cut, uh, right click to cancel its movement. And then I'll just, you don't need proportional editing for this. You can just move it up very slightly because there's only one that you're dealing with really. Like so, that's pretty good. And now I'll create this really long bit that overhangs the back here, this part. Okay, and the way I'm gonna do that, just like what I did before, extruding it, but extruding it this way, I'm extruding it a lot further in this case because it's obviously a lot further out. And then as you can probably guess, we wanna create a smooth curve effect there. So first thing we do is add a loop cut. So I'm scrolling up until I get to, let's say five cuts, click, right click to cancel its movement. And now I'm going to select this part of it, making sure that you've made sure you've got that turned off when you do these selections. Otherwise you'll only be selecting half of your mesh and it'll look all weird. Um, so turn on proportional editing. Now, if I pull this up, you can see that, uh, well, first of all, um, you can see that I'm moving the top part of this that I don't want to move. So I want, if you want part of your mesh to be unaffected by the proportional editing, easy way to, to uh, change that is to hide it. So you select that part of the mesh, you just hit H. Now, when I select this, I can pull that up and it won't affect the other part that's hidden. Um, but you can see that the fall off here is the wrong type. Um, it's going in the wrong direction. I want it to be, um, yeah, I want it to sort of like taper there downwards. So easiest way to do it is by setting it to sphere. So with sphere, now when I pull this up, you can see the effect that it's having. Just pretty well, perfect. Like so. So I'll just click right there. And now if I hit Alt H, it will bring back the part of the mesh that I, that I, I almost said hoed, <laughs> the part that I had hidden. And um, yeah, that is looking pretty good. Um, Cool, so we are gonna leave part one here, but just before I close, I'm just gonna scale this down, just squash it a little bit, because I can see in this example here, I mean, as I mentioned, every anvil is different, but in the one down here at the bottom, I sort of like this stumpy sort of base. If it's if this middle part here is too long, like it is in our case, it could sort of look like top heavy, the anvil, um, like it's sort of on its tiptoes or something. So I'm just squashing it down, and if you hold down control, might do it until it's 0.7 pretty good and then I'll bring that up to there lovely and then if I want to make sure I bring it back down to its origin point I'll just drag it down and there we go all right so in part two we're going to be doing that cutout shape making that that cylinder inbred <laughs> in shape in cut whatever um, in part two if you like this video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it otherwise please click on part two and i will see you there bye